Hey guys, I'm Dov, and today I'm back with more Total War Warhammer 2 online action. Today I'm back with the Tomb Kings, going to be taking a look at another replay from the recent tournament. This is going to be Ark and the Black, who's taken Kotep as one of the option lords, going to be facing off against Crabling's Grimgore. We saw Crabling already in one replay before. Now he's going to be facing off against the spooky, scary skeletons, which, interestingly enough, haven't brought any terror-causing units. Uh, Kotep, though, is actually a pretty good niche pick here. The main reason being is he does have this uh, Lich Staff here, so every time he casts a spell, he's going to be adding some ability recharge. So, personally, I like to just immediately, as soon as the battle starts, cast one of the cheap spells just to pop that off uh, before I forget, just to stop a Wa from going off on the charge, basically. But yeah, Arkan's also got both the cheap spells here on Kotep. Sandstorm, of course, as well. In terms of the rest of the army, he's got a mix of Tomb Guard in the front, with some Nehekara Warriors, a single Bow Shabti, and lots of Nehekara Horsemen as well. These guys are an interesting pick against the Greenskins, too. They'll trade, excuse me, decently well against most Greenskin uh, Light Cavalry. Stuff like, uh, you know, Spider Riders, Wolf Riders. Without the Wah at least up, I'm curious to see how they would trade with the Wah active, but, you know, Squig Hoppers, that sort of thing, they'll do quite well. There's also some Skeleton Horseman Archers, um, and, uh, yeah, more of the same over on the other side. Some Skeleton Spears as well, and for Crablings, uh, Grimgor's Horde, he's got some Squigs out on the extreme flanks, and in the middle, lots of Savage Orcs, Black Orcs, and uh, Savage Orc Biggins, as well as the uh, Regiment of Renown Night Goblos here, the... Uh, Warlords boys, these are the unbreakable ones, and we've also got, of course, Grimgore Ironhide, Rusty Errors, there's probably an Orc Shaman around here as well, yep, looks like there he is, and a couple more Goblin Archers, so yeah, gonna get the battle underway, you can see Kotep uh, is gonna pop that Incantation of Vengeance, and that does apply the Lich Staff, which you can see did pop on Grimgore here, so that is gonna add ability recharge to Wa and prevent Wa from going off on the charge, which is pretty critical. He also falls up with the Sandstorm directly on top of those Black Orcs. So their speed's being debuffed, they're getting hit by the Vortex, which is actually doing okay for Vortex cast on a single uh, unit like that. But you can see the Savage Orcs are definitely having a tough time, and these Squig Hoppers just get swamped by Skeleton Cap. You can see the... Uh, Nekar Horsemen will actually trade very well here with the Squig Hoppers, especially with the support of the Skeleton Spears, of course. And they're going to get in there and spear those Squigs down no problem. Meanwhile, mainline engagement getting underway. Uh, Tomb Guard will trade decently against the Savage Orcs because of their okay melee defense. Uh, they're doing all right right now. I don't know if they're necessarily trading at cost, but a Fist of Gork on those Savage Orcs. And they'll probably win out there. And the, and the Goblin Firing Line is in range now to start mowing through. But the uh, Tomb Guard holding out reasonably well. You can see Grimgore starting to munch through. And these neck are uh, warriors over here suffering pretty badly. More Black Orcs following up as well. And this side's probably going to collapse. We do have some uh, Nekar horsemen going around the side to try and catch those Squig Hoppers on the side there. Meanwhile, the Skeleton Horseman Archers, great value here, just shooting these uh, exposed black, uh, Savage Orcs here out on the flank. So, uh, yeah, so far so good. Tomb Kings have managed to get a lot of their ranged units in this commanding hill position, and the Ushabti Great Bows are firing at Grimgore there. And it looks like a nice Brain Burster going down on this Tomb Guard. Great use of the Brain Burster there going after a... You know, a high value, uh, low armor unit, but unfortunately a lot of the goblins and so on being carved up in the back line, the neck car horsemen were able to very easily beat the uh, squigs and with the mobility engagement and just greater numbers of tomb kings, you can see a very cool cinematic shot as more tomb king forces fire down from the hill and uh, more, uh, are those tomb guard or, yeah, tomb guard coming down the hill. We've got the uh, Nekar horsemen fighting. Of course, with the Savage Orc Biggins, we'll tear them to absolute shreds. But, uh, you know, they were able to get in and at least disrupt the back line. More spells from Kotep going down. He's relatively safe to just kind of run around here. Grimgore, unfortunately, uh, just getting bogged down by Cav here. At least he's got his Shaman buddy to keep him company here. But, uh, yeah, looks like uh, another Brain Burst is going down there. Very nicely done. Uh, Shabti being summoned up here on top of the Savage Rock Biggins, and oh man, look at the damage they just took, holy cow, that was, uh, that was absolutely brutal, those Savage Rock Biggins are legit, but, uh, yeah, Balance Power starting to turn against the Greenskins despite everything, they've been able to take down quite a few units, but at the end of the day, 
Just uh, the width of this Tomb King army means that they were able to just body up and uh, out trade in that way. And of course, Kotep dropping the support spells as well, always key. And the ranged units here, especially the Skeleton Horseman Archers, which you wouldn't necessarily think would be good in this matchup because they're considerably slower than uh, something like uh, Wolf Riders. But with all the Nehekara Horsemen to protect, these guys were actually relatively safe here to just fire in on Savage Orcs and other targets like that. They can also help run down a low leadership or, uh, you know, just low health units in general. So very good value there from the Skeleton Horseman Archers and from the Nehekar Warriors with Kotep nonetheless. So a nice build you don't get to see too often. Of course, Grimgor is not necessarily the most competitive Greenskin Lord. Uh, I've already talked plenty about the help that Grimgor needs, but uh, you can see he's going to get in here, start to cut through some of these uh, Tomb Guard in the front line with, with the Savage Boys. But, uh, oh man... Goblin's going for the ride, going for a ride in the background, rather, and uh, yeah, these guys are having a bad time. Kind of just summarizes the whole match in a nutshell there. And uh, finally, Wa goes off, and you can see this is the first time Wa's gone off the entire match, and that's the power that Kotep gives you in this matchup with the Lich Staff. It's very, very powerful here. Uh, surprising not to see any terror-causing units from Arkan's army. You would expect to see at least one Tomb Scorpion, maybe. It's just something to give you some terror, because the Greenskins are generally relatively weak to it. But, nonetheless, still very well played, very strong build. And, uh, yeah, ended up working out for him, so we'll just keep soaking up the good old cinematics as the, uh, the Orcs and the Tomb Kings grind out the last of it here. Looks like another Skullstorm going down in the far, uh, far side there. Right on top of some more black orcs. And uh, yeah, looks like some <laughs> fanatics being unleashed there. Tomb Guard uh, holding out here. These actually uh, Nekar warriors here fighting against the Unbreakable AP Gloonies, or at least what remains of them. Grimgore, of course, going to be carving them up as well. Uh, he'll do just fine at, uh, fighting Nekar warriors, there's no question there. But uh, he is getting worn down over time, and these shot to Grapos have just been free to fire here on the hill. Just the one unit oftentimes is enough here. They're going to be firing in on these uh, Black Orcs, obviously, uh, with the armor target. And, yeah. Ooh, absolutely brutal stuff. They'll definitely get the work done that they need to. And with those Black Orcs going down, they're also getting drained by the Incantation of Vengeance as well, so... Uh, yeah, I'm actually not sure that particular spell, how the damage scaling is, if it's better to cast on, like, cav-sized uh, units or, you know, or if it's better to cast on larger units or, you know, kind of how that scaling works. have to do some testing to see, but uh, anyway, this is going to be critical army losses for the Greenskins at this point. We'll fast forward through the end as the uh, Unbreakable Gabos get mopped up here, but very fun battle. Hope you all enjoyed watching. Yeah, in terms of the army breakdown here, you can see Arkan's army. The Shop to Grapo is able to get three XP chevrons. And uh, what I was saying about the Skeleton Horseman here, the Nehekar Horseman able to win the mobility engagement. And then the Nehekar, uh, sorry, the Skeleton Horseman archers here, all able to rack up quite a few kills. 79, 91, 52, 87. Uh, not bad at all. 90 on Nehekar Horseman, uh, 75 here. Uh, the Tomb Guard also did pretty well on the front line. Some of them ended up getting cut through, but they lasted long enough that the uh, mobility was able to get the work done. And Kotep, of course, dropping the spells. Grimgor himself, 67 kills, not too bad. Um, there weren't a lot of really high-value armor targets for him to go after, so he's kind of just stuck fighting in the infantry line the whole time, but it just kind of goes to show he's not necessarily great at doing that either. I just wish that his weapon strength was a little bit higher and he had maybe a couple more splash attack targets so that he could really just cleave through infantry super hard. But uh, anyway, 39 on the uh, the Orc Shaman, not too bad. Some of the Orc infantry did quite well. You can see uh, Biggins, 177, 85 on the other Biggins, 82 on these Black Orcs, 71 on the AP Gloonies, not too bad at all. But uh, the ranged units and the Squig Hoppers definitely did not pay out at all, and that was a good portion of that ar this army here. I think that's ultimately what cost uh, Crabbling. If you were to, have, to instead of investing in these uh, infantry skirmishers here, uh, if you would have gone with more of a wider mobility build, like with maybe more wolf riders or something, although wolf riders, their leadership is so poor, I'd imagine they would just run away from the car horsemen pretty quickly, so I'm not sure. You know, it'd be interesting to see. But uh, obviously, I mean, in this matchup, you got to plan for big armored constructs and other things as well, so a pretty nice kind of off meta build from Arkan the Black there to help deal with what the Greenskins can bring. So hopefully, you guys enjoyed watching that one. 
Um, if you do like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button so every time I upload a new video, you will be notified. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.